Lights, episode 148, fire. <laughs> it's a little dark up here. Looks like there might be a storm. Is but it a hurricane? It's not the hurricane. No, it's not coming this far north. But um, I feel terrible for, um, like I have friends that on Sanibel Island, they retired and then they got hit the first time and now it's boom. It looks like. You know, this is where my dad will go. Now that cone could go anywhere from here to go. No, no, <laughs> it's going to go pretty much usually where they say it's going to go. And I don't understand. Ron DeSantis was on, um, today's a Monday, was like, um, none of the tourists leave, need to leave right now. Oh, I think you, I, the yes, I would say leave. No, when would you what? rather go? What? Tuesday at 9 when right. the thing's coming in. So I feel bad for the Florida people. And my neighbors, they have a place down there and they just replaced their roof. And now oh, what? No. Yeah. Um, yeah, so that's not good. So what are we doing, termites? Wait, have so, they named it yet? Have they named Yeah, they named it I- Idalia, if I'm saying it right. Idalia? Idalia? Idalia. Like Vidalia Onion? Yeah. Like, like a, that's Idalia. too hard. They should have skipped over that. <laughs> they could have skipped it and said, nope, too, ah, too hard for the people. Right. They won't, it needs to be, like, no. what was the last one? Ike? That's easy. Ike. Hurricane Ike. The last one was... Or Ian. It was oh, Ian, because that's the one that hit... Yeah, I just saw a post about it, because um, uh, Ian's track was exactly the way this one's track is, and then it turned at the last minute, and boom, pounced on my friends. Sad times. Yes. And they spent all this time redoing it. Uh, but I'm telling you, it's all my retired friends. And then they go down there, and then they spend all their time picking up stuff from the hurricane wrecked. Yeah. And I think they're just going to get bigger and stronger and more frequent. Your we are just in the beginning. Friends. My friends are not going to get bigger and stronger. <laughs> no, no, they're not. No, they're not. Definitely not getting stronger. stronger. No, none of us are. Um, I don't know. I would think twice about it. I, I'd yeah. rather go. Well, I don't know. Just I love the water, too, but maybe just a lake. Yeah. You know? It seems like the Gulf is getting really frequently. These storms are getting crazy. But the weather channel's on fire. <clears throat> Every nerd. The on. one guy, if I didn't, know, if I just watched him without the sound on, I would think he did cocaine. He's so <laughs> excited. He's so, so excited that the weather has just gone bonkers. He's got so many things to cover. He, they have simulations of what a six foot surge will like and a 12 foot surge and. They're just, I love it when the nerds, I feel like they're my friends in my head. I know that sounds crazy. When they get excited. Because they don't often get to get their moment in the sun. Very and nice. it's your time to shine, Weather Channel. It's your time to shine. <laughs> Jim Cantori's posting. He's packing. He's going down. Yep. He's on the move. Um, he's adorable. <clears throat> so hunker down, Floridians. Well, by the time you hear this, well, yeah. 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 I hope you're out of there. Um, that's what, like, my friend, his parents are in Tampa, and they're retired. And it, they were like, yeah, we're just going to stay. It, this is where, like, my parents, too. <laughs> you are retired. You don't have to do anything for the right. rest of your life. Huh? Not one job, nothing. Right. Why can't you look at this as like, hey, here's an opportunity to go visit Birmingham. Right. Like, you have extra money. You yeah. could get a room in a Marriott and go take a little trip. And then they always go, well, all of our friends are still here. Well, they're not smart either. I don't know where you found your friends, but all of you need to re-meet and have a meeting and say, let's go somewhere fun. Right. Nope. They have the means. They have a car. No. No. If that power goes out, you know, it gets so hot without air conditioning. And then your TV doesn't work. Nothing works. Then your food's going to go bad. It's just a cavalcade. I feel most sorry for people with lots of animals because you don't want to leave your animals. I get it. Right. Or you have to find a hotel that does that. Not easy. I remember being in Charlotte once, and a Weston was taking all the people that were running from a hurricane. And, wow. and I walked in. It's my dream. It's my mother's nightmare. I walked in, and the entire lobby was dogs and cats. I'm like, yes! <laughs> winner, winner! <laughs> meow, meow! The cats are in their cages. The dogs are... <laughs> and I was like, oh, these are the people running from the hurricane, and the Weston let them bring their animals. It was great. Anyway, say stay Floridian people of the Florida... Um, so what am I drinking? We'll start with what I'm drinking. This is a little cat head seltzer. Yeah. It's a vodka seltzer, gluten-free, sugar-free, vegan, real vodka, and it's called cat head. Nice. And it's made in where? Jackson, Mississippi. 
I'm Jackson. going to Jackson. And I went to Jackson. And then I drove to Philadelphia, Mississippi. And I... What did you do there? I went to go see Dolly Parton in the 500-seat theater. Um, there was a termite sitting across the way from me. He said hi. Nice. Uh, yeah, it's nice. Cool. And there were no douchebags. Nope. I think probably it was nine. It was 500 of Marty Stewart's relatives. If you're familiar with, <laughs> if you're familiar with Marty Stewart, he's a country singer. And if you've ever watched the Country History of Country Music by Ken Burns, which is a great show, I don't. Even, I'm on the fence about country, kind of like that. I'm not a. I don't have enough knowledge, but I thought, oh, I'll watch it. It was very, very good. But Marty Stewart is in it. Like, 90% of the time. I'm like, did they interview no one else? Or is it just like, I've sat for those interviews in VH1. I love the 80s. I've done all those. And there's always somebody that just will never shut the fuck up. Like, I'll answer your question. And then they're like, do you have anything else to say? No. I, I answered. I, you know, it was funny. It was short. and good. He. It's happy hour. So the theater, that's his hometown. And ha the theater is a fundraiser for that and for her imagination library. And, of course, yes, he came out. And it was fine. He didn't overhog the stage. Um, but I bet you a lot of those people were Marty's relatives and BFFs. That's what, <laughs> that's what I'm thinking. Uh -huh. Like, I didn't see. I thought there might be, you know, some country singer, star people. Yeah. Well, not at the, there was a 3 o'clock show and a 7 o'clock show. It was literally like driving to a Hallmark movie. There's a town square, uh -huh. and I parked. And then I'm like, I wonder where I pay. Oh, you don't. Welcome to 1952. You just park downtown. No, and I kept looking for signs. And then, like, I don't want to get towed. Like, how am I going to get home? No, parking was free. And then they had a thing. They didn't have a good meeting about their wristbands because I had a wristband to say I was old enough to drink. I had a wristband to say I could go into where the drinks are. And I had a wristband that said I could go in the theater and drink in there. I'm like, this could have just been one wristband. I'm right. feeling... This is a little out of hand. But you go in their area and there's food and you're in like the town square. And then Dolly came out Stop. on the stage outside. No. Hey, y'all. It's 103 <laughs> degrees. It was so, so hot. And she's all dressed up. It's in between her shows. She's like, thank you for coming out. And they unveiled a mural on the side of the wall. After and wildflowers. After wildflowers. Yeah. And Marty's out there and she's thanking and waving, getting a picture made. It was. I was like, this is truly like a Hallmark movie, like where the, the angel comes out in the Times Square and goes, it's going to be fine. We're going to save the town. This is so wonderful. Philadelphia, Mississippi, we're living to see another day. It was amazing, though. I mean, I got caught up in it. I, w I couldn't believe it. And then to find out later, too, she didn't even feel that good. She had a bit bad cold. Oh, nice. I know. She, take, she took a bunch of, like, cold meds, so she sat down a lot during the show. She talked more than normal, but I'll, I liked it just as much. I nice. think because she didn't feel that good. She could, the singing is harder than talking. But the stories were funny. I don't care how long they are. If she's great. saying them, they were super funny. That's great. Um, yeah. It was really, really something. Um, and good for her. Nice. And then, boom, she was gone, just like an angel that flew in <laughs> and gone. And we're all left in the town square. Was Everybody's. There a hot dog cart? Huh? Was there a hot dog cart? There well, yes, there was a hot dog cart. Well, oh. it was a Polish dog, which I thought was kind of weird for the South. They don't usually go, that's a little, like, Chicago-y yeah. to have a Polish dog. Very yeah, very <laughs> ethnic for Philadelphia and Mississippi, which I cannot say was be booming with ethnicity. Um, <laughs> no. There was, <laughs> there were quite a few honey boo-boos running around. <laughs> trust me on that one. Um, mm. But it was a cute little town, and Marty, they raised, like, over a million bucks, uh -huh. so the theater will still be there, and cool. it was just like a Hallmark movie, except I had a Polish dog in a, in a drink, and you can't have those in some of the Hallmark movies. <laughs> you can't have your drinks. You saw, where did you stay? Um, I stayed in Jackson uh -huh. at the Westin. It's beautiful if you ever go to Jackson. Yeah, and then I got uh, uh, fried, grilled oysters. I don't trust them anywhere outside of the Deep South. Yeah. Mississippi, where, maybe... Mobile, Alabama. They grill them on a grill, and then they put Parmesan cheese on them and all this other stuff. Oh, Parmesan, like, not the the breadcrumbs yeah. and all that stuff. And Parmesan. then uh, garlic and butter. And I mean, they're so... I just kept sending pictures to Lewis because I knew he would totally regret <laughs> his decision to go elsewhere instead of coming with me. Uh, yep, that's what you get, Lou. Baby crab claws, you miss those too. Ah! <laughs> um... So that was that's that was that, and that was just um, 
I mean, if it ever happens again, spend all your money. Go go do that. I don't know how much longer, though. I mean, she's, I don't think she's sick or nothing, but she's 77. How and much? A, and a billionaire. A billionaire. Yeah. Yeah, there's no reason to leave your property. No. No. Well, no. Here, Carl. Carl Dean's sitting at home. <laughs> go talk to Carl. <laughs> Oh, my God. So that was wonderful. Um, what are we going to try here? Well, look at this. I'll be going to a Bucky's this week. I still haven't found out if I got the job. I don't think they tell anybody until September 18th. No. Yeah, they probably won't give it to me. Uh, Doritos, sweet and tangy barbecue. Ew. Yeah. Well, fine. they're good. Yeah. We're fine. Okay. I mean, if you're in a barbecue mood. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's spicy. It says sweet and tangy, but they're spice. Yeah. New flavor. How many, who sits around and makes this shit up all day? The children. The children. <laughs> Good for the children. Plano, Texas. Oh, it's, they're Frito-Lay. Yeah. Yep, I love Fritos. Um, so, yeah, I don't know. If you're in a barbecue mood, I say, yeah, these. Okay. And then Marie's, which is my favorite, dad's favorite salad dressing. Um, the blue cheese. Or as he likes to call it, Roquefort. Um, <laughs> it's a roasted garlic aioli. I know, he'll ask for that in a restaurant. He'll order a highball and a salad with Roquefort. I'm like, Dad, the waiter is not 75. Right. The waiter is 21 and doesn't know what a highball or Roquefort is. So why don't we start over and say you'll have a whiskey and water and you'd like blue cheese. How about that? Oh, oh, oh. If you love garlic, yeah. I'm not that much in, not, I'm not this into it. Okay. But if you do, that's a winner. That's Marie's good. stuff is always good. It's just, I don't love garlic that much. That's a lot of garlic. Yeah. Uh, so, moving on. I don't have any other queen news. Everybody's been very quiet. Tay -tay was in Mexico. Oh, Tay-Tay was in Mexico. Uh, good for her. The TikTok videos are um, I did see the one, the one Mexican guy. Yeah. He's just singing it in English and Spanish. He's going crazy, and he had, he had a shitty seat. Like, he's way up in the nosebleeds. He didn't even care. No. He did not care. Uh -huh. No. I'm at that age now where I'm like, where are we sitting? Because I'm not climbing up that high. Right. No, 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 no. And where am I parking? That's yeah. my other thing. If you don't have a plan for that, I'm not going. I need to hear the plan, exactly. and I need to know exactly how it's going to happen. Um yeah, I don't know. The rest of them haven't done really anything. Well, Stevie's out on the road. They're getting ready for Labor Day. Was that, that's usually when they slow down, but I don't know. Summer, pe the music people are more of a summer activity. Comedy, comedy's more of an indoor sport. That's when we get going um, big time compared to the summer. So, um, update! It's an Anna Delvey update. I know you're not going to love it. You're not going to love it. Anna Delvey. And Kelly Coutrone are joining voices to produce New York Fashion Week show. Stop it. Delvey's 32 and Coutrone is 57. They've joined up to produce a fashion show that is set to take place Monday, September 11th. The presentation will feature emerging designer Xiao Yang and will be hosted at the Canal Street studio. I thought um, Schmuckles here couldn't leave her house. Yeah. thought we were under house arrest. I was going to ask you. Well, I think this other, I, have two, I had two articles. I don't know. I think she's going to stay in her apartment. Come on. I'm serious. And I'm sure in like the Wizard of Oz. she'll probably zoom in like the oh. Wizard of Oz. Um, uh, they, uh, Coutrone and Delvey told the publication that the event's goal is to provide visibility for rising talent in the fashion industry. This is fun, but not a joke. It's a serious project to gain some attention for talented designers. This project is like if Thelma and Louise and Mother Teresa had a baby. What? What? What is that? I don't know. Are they Thelma and Louise and the fashion lady's mother, Teresa? She's an antichrist after Elizabeth. <sighs> Delvey, for her part, is elated to work with Coutrone, who she said inspired her to move to the Big Apple. Who still says Big Apple? Old people. Old people. <laughs> yeah. It was so great to connect with her. I used to watch uh, Kel on Earth as a teenager in Germany, and she was, all, oh, here, I should read it like her. This is her yeah. quote. I used to watch her on Kel on Earth as a teenager in Germany, and she was always such an icon in my mind. My first internship was for a fashion PR agency in Berlin, and that decision was largely influenced by her as well. No, somebody, somebody on Instagram goes, what accent is that? I don't know. I'm just doing her. Yeah. What? It's a combo of 
German and fake. English and mm-hmm. fake You're and fake. affected. Yeah. I'm just mimicking it. Mm-hmm. Um, Delvey's plans with Contron isn't the only way she's been busy since she's been placed on house arrest in 2022. Yeah. She's not, she, she can't be down there. Um, she has a podcast. Now, who would, well. Anna Delvey has a podcast, though? Yeah, it's on Spotify. <laughs> yeah, she's had, she's had Julia Fox, Whitney Cummings, and Emily Rajajowski. I can't say her name, because it's Kowalski. Um, I don't know. What would I even speak to this woman about? The things I would want to talk to Anna about, she probably ain't going to want to talk about. Like, give me a prison day moment by moment. What what happens when you wake up? Are there calisthenics involved? Do you do your leaps and jumps, as they would stay in Germany? Do you go into the gymnasium to do your leaps and jumps? <laughs> so there you go. Anna's at it again. Wow. Yep. Good for her. Yeah. So proud of you, Anna. <laughs> You've avoided the... the um. The police again with your deportation. I don't know what's going on, why you aren't being deported yet, but she's not. Update! There's another freak. This guy, though, <clears throat> if anyone buys a ticket from this man, you deserve it. That's all I'm saying, and I'm usually a little lenient about that stuff, but fraudster, again, stop using the word fraudster. Yeah. Thief, mm-hmm. criminal, mm-hmm. felon, sociopath, sociopath uh-huh. any of those will work. Yeah. He relaunches the fire festival from behind bars with eight thousand dollar tickets. Eight thousand dollars. He's going to do it again. He's in jail launching. Uh huh. The ill-fated fire festival has been relaunched after its fraudster co-founder devised a seven thousand nine hundred ninety-nine dollar a ticket comeback while behind bars. Wow. Eight grand. Who's playing? Uh, well, hold on. He's not going to tell you who's playing. <laughs> Paddles. This is He's this is none of your business. <laughs> You just give me that $8,000, and we'll, I'll tell you later who's going to come. Yeah. <laughs> Undaunted by the spectacular collapse of the original venture in 2007, 2017, Billy McFarland drew up a scheme to bring back the event uh, while back in solitary confinement. Is now promoting the event on social media. Fire Festival 2 is finally happening. Tell me why you should be invited, he said in a Twitter post. Build is the greatest party that never was. The chaos surrounding the original Fire Festival was the subject of documentaries both on Hulu and Netflix, and I watched both and they were both great and very different. If you want to watch it, you should watch. Don't just pick one or the other. Because one is more like a story in, in a chronological order. than the other one's more interview-based. But anyway. Mm-hmm. Um, the event was organized by McFarlane and rapper Ja Rule in 2016. They promised the ultimate music festival, which was to take place on Norman's K, a private island in the Bahamas once owned by Pablo Escobar. It was hyped by influencer supermodels, including Kendall Jenner, Bella Hadid, and Chanel Iman. Hadid. Hadid? <laughs> Who's Bella Hadid? What does she do? Bella Hadid. <laughs> Who's Hadid? Bella Hadid? That's how they'd say it in the she's Midwest. An influencer. She's an influencer? Yeah. Uh, well, she's not influencing me, because I don't even know how to say your name. Bella Attendees were promised two transformative weekends. Oh, they got that. Yeah, we just didn't say if that'd be a good or bad tr- transformation. <laughs> At an immersive music festival, offering the best food, art, and music and adventure. The cheapest t- tickets started about 500 bucks with VIP pa- packages causing an eye-watering 12 grand. Nearly all the tickets were sold in just 24 hours. The reality, how it was very, very different. In 2017, the festival goers were dropped off on Great Exuma, the largest city, uh, the largest of the Ks in the Bahamas, rather than an exclusive desert island. Accommodation was provided in the form of sodden tents, and the best food offering turned out to be a cheese sandwich. The kids that posted the picture of the food on Instagram, I'm, uh-huh. I'm sorry, but <laughs> if you paid all that money just to see Blink-182, you need to sit with your bad cheese sandwich <laughs> and, th- and think about yourself. Yeah. Think about what you did so you don't do it again. The festival <laughs> collapsed and a blizzard of litigation followed. He was jailed for defrauding investors and committing wire fraud. He was released in May last year, so he's out after serving four years. Last November, he appeared on Good Morning America and admitted he had let people down. See, no. No, 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 Good Morning America. No. no, we don't have him on. No. You're a criminal. You you did your time. Good for you. Yep. Now, go about your way, but we're not going to keep promoting your next bullshit. No. Like, who books? Sometimes I just go, who th- thought that was a good idea? One of the children. <sighs> Maybe one of the children. I don't one know. No, the bookers are usually old. They're people my age. They're They're not... They're not the youngsters. There you, go. you don't get to be Booker. Mm-mm. 
But a matter of months after his Mia couple, uh, McFarlane wearing AirPods and a plush white dressing gown. Wow. Okay. Wow, that sounds like something out of the crown. That <laughs> Prince Charles would be, where's my manservant to put me in my plush dressing gown? He said, this is a big day. It's been the absolute wildest journey to get here. It really started during a seven-month stint in solitary confinement. I wrote out um, a 50-page idea. The fire, uh, fire rerun is set to take place in December next year. The festival's lineup has not yet been announced, but he said the first drop of tickets for the event has sold out. Bullshit. Bullshit, yeah. He's lying, guys. Mm-hmm. All ticket sale revenue will be held in escrow until the final date is announced. Oh, I bet it will not. <laughs> He's already spent that. Whoever sent your money, cry now. Right. Just start crying now. <laughs> Update! Update! <laughs> Elon admits that his $44 billion X takeover, meaning Twitter, may fail as so many have predicted. May? May fail. Well, he should give it to the people. He acknowledged um, that it might fail. A stark admission that came as he faced prep. F- I didn't even notice this fresh pu- public outrage over a decision to eliminate the social media's sites block feature. Now I'm on Twitter. Here's what I have noticed. Okay. I have all these people that say so and so followed you, so and so followed you, but my followers don't ever increase anymore, okay. which is fine. I mean, I whatever. Wow. I don't know even what I believe on that anymore. But I'm on there. I never saw them eliminate the block feature. I guess this happened last week. But I don't block people anyway. I just hit mute because a lot of people want you to block them so they can take a screenshot of that Mm -hmm. and then say, oh, look, so-and-so blocked me. I just mute you. And then I like the idea, if you're mean, that you're typing your little thumbs off and I never hear it. (laughs) It just goes into the ether world. I mean, I don't have that many jerks, but occasionally one will pop up. I, so anyway, he commented on X's uncertain future came uh, uh, came even as threads, the rival text-based social media platform launched by Zuckerberg last month, prepared to roll out a web version in its latest effort to lure users. Threads is not catching on. Nope. I listened to all you termites. Everybody answered. Yep. Go to this one. Somebody said Blue Sky. I haven't looked into that yet. I got to see what that's all about. Yep. But threads, and like I signed up and they're, there's all these people that are already following me. I don't even know that I believe that. I feel like right. some are real, mm-hmm. but it's a lot. Yeah. And then I think, oh, are these just bots? Like, mm-hmm. I, don't I don't know. He said the sad truth is there are no great social no- special social networks right now. We may fail, as so many have predicted, but we at least are try our best to be the one. He's worth $225 billion. He infuriated wow. users last Friday. Okay, this happened last Friday. Uh-huh. I was with my parents. It's kind of all-encompassing. <laughs> I'm not on Twitter when I'm with them. N- no. No, no. Too many reasons. It's, no. <laughs> it's hard to think, oh, I'm going to go on Twitter with um, their uh, Yorkie barking uh-huh. right here, right here on the couch. It's right here on the top <laughs> of the couch, dominating, which it's not supposed to be doing. <laughs> so this happened last Friday. They would know that users would no longer be able to block accounts except in the case of direct messages. He argued that the block feature makes no sense and said users would have to simply make do with muting accounts from appearing on their timeline. Well, that's what I do anyway, I don't know. Mm-hmm. The move triggered immediate pushback with Monica Lewinsky among those who urged Musk to reconsider nixing the future, uh, the feature. Please, wow. she wrote, please rethink removing the block feature as an anti-bullying activist and target of harassment. I can assure you it's critical to keep people safe online. I don't get it. Right. I'm missing something here. If you mute them, you don't see it. Right. So who cares? I mean, I don't ever agree with Elon. No. But the block thing, so you can't tweet Monica Lewinsky anymore? Just mute them. Yeah. Well, I don't understand. Yeah. What does, how much money did this save you anyway? It's already on there. The block yeah. thing's already... Why? Despite his apparent doubts about X's future success... He poked fun at the users who raised a stink about his decision to get rid of it. Pretty fun blocking people who complain that blocking is going away. How does the medicine taste? Oh, what? God. See, he's always such the antagonist. Yeah. He's blocking people. I mean, I guess you could use it like if Monica's a famous person and she's actually truly being like stalked or harassed, if you could show the cops, look, I blocked this person. Mm-hmm. 
I don't know. I don't see my cop friends really giving a shit either way about that. <laughs> I, I, the, no, I don't see them going, oh, well, that, that's a lot of proof there, right? You got a stalker, Kathleen. You're going to have to do a little bit better than that. I don't know. Maybe I'm missing something. Um, on Saturday, a glitch of X's platform caused pictures and videos that were uploaded to Twitter prior to 2015 to disappear from the site. Okay. Again, I don't divide an Elon person, but what would ever possess me to go look at my own pictures from 2015 on Twitter? Right. It's eight years ago. Right. What? How would I even know that? I don't know. I haven't looked at anything beyond what I said a week ago. Maybe, maybe, <laughs> probably yesterday. I don't know. Hello. One of the pictures that seemed to be temporarily be erased was comedian Ellen DeGeneres' famous selfie from the 2014 Oscars along... So and so and so and so and so. The image was later restored. It's online somewhere. Right. Who cares? Yeah. More vandalism. I mean, he shouldn't be doing it if he's if he's just doing it as like a hate thing. Right. Just just ju- juvenile. Yeah. I mean, he wants a headline. Yeah. Yeah. Um. Uh, separately, a report from Mashable revealed that forty-two percent of Musk's roughly one hundred fifty-three million followers had zero followers of their own. More than 100 million accounts that follow Musk have tweeted fewer. Well, they're bots. Right. And then you pay for that. They're you can buy followers. You can buy as many as you want. Yeah, and it's bots. not that expensive. I can tell it. the comedians that do it. It's so obvious. But why would you want to do that? I don't want bots on there. If I think it's a bot, I immediately right. throw them out. Right. Yeah, because I, I don't want them on there putting doing things, whatever bots do, <laughs> secret things, getting in my phone. Uh, holy shit, they found it. Oh, my God, there's no more updates. There's no more updates. Five 2,300-year-old coins and infant remains found at ancient cemetery. Archaeologists have uncovered five 2,300-year-old gold coins as well as the remains of young children at the site of an ancient burial ground. The archaeology site of the ancient Carthage added to... um, uh, World Heritage List in 1979 lies what is now the residential suburban of modern Tunisia's capital, Tunis. It was a sacred site. 2,300-year-old coins. Wow. Yeah. That's kind of weird. They found all the kids, too, though. Yeah. I, yeah, I don't necessarily know about, about all that. Um, they found the discovery in the uh, where they were doing uh, um, evacu- uh, excavation stuff. It was a great city of antiquity founded by the Phoenicians on the north coast of Tunisia in the first millennium B.C. The city became a thriving port and trading center, eventually developing into a significant power in the Mediterranean. Oh. Yes. Wonderful. Thousands of urns containing the ashes of young children had previously been found at the site. Yeah. The gold coins reflect the richness of the historical period. Wow. They date back to the third century B.C. Wow. That's crazy. Yeah. Yeah. Good for them. Now, what are you going to do with them? They better go to a museum. Right. Yeah. In July, they also discovered uh, several 500-year-old gold gold coins at the same place. And then they found a rare silver coin dated to the first Jewish revolt against the Roman Empire between A.D. 66 and 70. Cool. Yep. Good for you guys. Love it. This is freaky. This will make you believe in, like, trolls and underground beings. Yeah. Yeah. By the way, I'm checking in on the Loch Ness thing, and uh, all the updates I've seen is they have very strange noises. Well, that's not, sadly, that's not what I was hoping for. No. no. I, I got to get into it this week, but I'm going to check on that, see if there's any updates of anything. The ancient forest world discovered more than 600 feet below the surface in a huge sinkhole in China. A huge ancient forest has been discovered 630 feet under the ground down in a sinkhole in China. The underground mystery was stumbled upon in a Chinese geopark by a cave exploration team of scientists. The phenomenon is also known in China as Taikeng or Heavenly Pit. You should see a picture of this place. I mean, it looks like where hobbits live. It's beautiful. Wow. It's a beautiful forest. Uh-huh. Yeah. Um, uh, the geopark is described in the website as primarily set... Uh, Sedimentary with more than 60% of 3,000 M thick denovium. Okay, rocks. I can't do all that. That's way (laughs) too hard. Way too hard. It's known for being in the territory of caves and the world's longest natural bridge. Yeah, it's gorgeous, though. 
They've said that the primitive forest could be home to previously unidentified plant and animal species. Yeah, I bet. Yeah. I bet there's crazy shit living down there. Uh-huh. Great sinkholes like are not unusual in areas like this in China. The Chinese government states own news. Xin Hao released an official re- report saying that the discovery it brings their country to the number of 30 sinkholes. But wow. do they all have this kind of forest? Hmm? Hmm? Yeah. Hmm? The dense shade plants are up to one shoulders, and the ancient trees growing at the bottom are 40 meters high. Stop. Yeah. Holy shit. Yep. It took them forever to get to the bottom. They're usually created by the dissolution of bedrock by groundwater. Mm-mm-mm. It's like, it is like something. They said that it's a unique forest. It looks like something out of a fantasy movie. It does. What's the other one? Not the Hobbits. Is it the Hobbits? Uh, I, I don't go see those movies. Yeah. How many meters? 40? 42 meters high. Woo, that's 133 feet tall. 133 feet tall. Mm-hmm. Um, Big. Yeah. So if you want to go see the pictures, you should. Wow. What am I thinking of? I oh, Lord of the Rings. I didn't see it. I didn't either. Are those hobbits? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Nerd friends? Where are my nerd friends? <laughs> Those hobbits. Those are nerd I don't know. Moving on to news. We're moving on. This, okay. So I'm in Nashville a lot, half the year, and I want to go to the zoo because, and I'm going to tell you more about these guys next week, they have Komodo dragons. No. Yeah, they just got them. Shut up. And there's billboards all over town. Oh. The dragons are here. It's a fun zoo. Not as good as the St. Louis Zoo where I grew up. I put, would put our zoo up against Africa. That's how good the St. Louis Zoo is. Against the continent, the continent of, Africa? of Africa. And our zoo is free. It's always been free. Our yeah. zookeeper was Marlon Perkins from Mutual of uh, Omaha. Yeah. Yeah. No, the San Diego Zoo, I say, That's is true. they would tie. St. Louis and San Diego for number one zoos. Because when I started going on the road and I had all week in a town, I would always go to their zoo just for fun. And I mean, some of them... And I don't know if they've re- made repairs in the last 15 years, but uh, the Kansas City Zoo, come on, Kansas City, uh, fellow Missourians, let's get it together. They're focused on football. It was, <laughs> they're focused on football. <laughs> they're focused on football and barbecue. barbecue yeah. You gotta get, yeah, you got to get your shit together. Anyway, I want to go, I've been at the Nashville Zoo. It's good. Okay. It's very good. Um, but they have dragons. But now, spotless giraffe. Thought to be the only one in the world oh. was born at the Nashville Zoo. Stop it. Last week. Cool. Yep. One of the, it's so strange. It looks like a horse because it doesn't have the puzzle pieces. It has no markings. The puzzle pieces? Well, that's what I call the markings of a giraffe. <laughs> They're not dots. <laughs> They're not spots. It looks like puzzle pieces. Wow. One of the rarest sights in the animal kingdom has appeared in the unlikely setting of, ten- of a Tennessee zoo, which is hosted... The birth of what is thought to be the only the world's only singularly colored giraffe. It's brown. It's a beautiful brown red. Auburn, if you will. Red. Red. <laughs> the female giraffe, it's a gale. Uh, born July 31st is uniform brown color, lacking the distinctive patch pattern that giraffes, along with their exceptionally long necks, are known for. Bright said, uh, Bright Zoo. I thought it's at the Nashville. Where's Bright Zoo? Is that what this one's yeah. called in Nashville? Oh, it's called the I never knew. Um it's already six foot tall, the giraffe. She's already wow. six feet tall. The zoo believes it's the giraffe is one of a kind, given that giraffes are rarely born, rarely born without their modded appearance, which primarily serves as a form of camouflage in the wild. The skin under the spots also has a system of blood vessels that allows the giraffes to release heat through the center of each patch. Wow. Providing what? a form of thermal regulation. Cool. Isn't that crazy? Each giraffe, apart from the Tennessee newcomer, has a unique pattern of patches, while researchers believing these patterns are inherited from their moms. Bright Zoo said it hopes the unusual birth would help highlight the challenges faced by giraffes in the world. The world's tallest animal is threatened by the fragmentation of its habitat in Africa, as well as um, from illicit poaching. That's so sad. How could you kill one? I I just, I'm not against all hunting at all. My dad and cousins and brother, everybody goes deer hunting when there's too many deer, but you know there's none left. Right. I don't know. I couldn't do it. But then I see those people on Instagram that could do all that big, giant hunting, and I'm like, you big just game. want the Facebook picture. Yeah. Can't you just go next to it and get your picture taken? You got to sh- kill it? 
Oh, I know all the time. Um, the zoo has announced a contest, uh, contest for the public to name the new giraffe. The shortlisted <laughs> options are Kipiki, which means unique in Swahili, um, Shakiri, which means the most beautiful, and Jamela, which means one great beauty. One of great beauty. I was going to say Dolly. Yeah, why not Dolly? Yeah, name right. Dolly. Right. Let's not get all weird. Let's not get fancy down here in Nashville. You keep it simple, and we're going to write on that plaque. We're yeah. not writing Shahiki no. or whatever it was. <laughs> People be like, now do what? What are we supposed to call her, shitty? No, not shitty. Shahiki. <laughs> what Swahili? Shut up. Just call her something normal. Okay? How about Betty? For no reason. Just a nice name. Betty. <laughs> moving on moving on this is true i think people think sometimes i make this shit up but it is this is true germany germany do you want to explain your wolf man what yep this is weird and i don't understand how we don't know who this person is mysterious wolf man spotted in germany's harz mountains Reports have emerged, and these kids took a picture. The children were smart. Okay. Uh, from a distance, he looks like he has no clothing on. He has a giant stick, like a caveman. And he is either very, very, very dark-skinned, or he, I don't, you can't tell. Or maybe he's just been out in the sun too long for him. Reports have emerged from a, a, of a baffling sighting in the forests of central Germany's Harz Mountains, where hikers claim to have encountered an igna- ig- I can never say the word. enigmatic figure referred to as the Wolf Man. According to German newspaper Bild, the individual who is said to have lived in the forest for five years was captured on camera by two hikers. The photographs depict a man seemingly naked, covered in dirt, or, or appearing remarkably hairy, seated on the ground, engrossed in playing with the sand. This peculiar encounter unfolded at the base of a ruined castle in Blankburg, situated in the state of Saxony, Anhalt. This is so weird. Yeah. Gina Weiss, a 31-year-old, and her 38-year-old companion, Toby, were strolling through Blankenburg on a Tuesday evening when they stumbled upon the wolfman. She recounted the experience, stating, when we reached the sand caves, we saw the wolfman. He stood up on one of the caves, on one of the caves and held a long wooden stick like a lance arm. She described the individual's appearance as rem- reminiscent of a Stone Age figure from history books. Despite their 10-minute encounter, the wolfman remained silent, keeping a fixed gaze on his hikers. Oh, well, now oh. you've now you've been cursed. Yeah. You're not supposed to look at him. Don't you no. know those things? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Don't make eye contact. Don't make eye contact. Leave him alone. Yeah. This wasn't the first encounter with the wolfman in the Blankenburg region. Authorities disclosed that numerous reports have been filed over the past five years detailing sightings of an individual adorned in what appears to be wolf attire or fur within the forested expanse. The unusual sightings even prompted calls for help. Blackburn Fire Fire Brigade's Alexander remarked, someone clearly knows how to live outside and adapt to the changing seasons. (laughs) Help. Uh, 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 Hikers alarmed authorities with a call stating, help, there's a wolf man running around here. I don't think that's an abnormal call. No. No. The plea was taken seriously by both the fire brigade and the police, re- resulting in a search throughout the area. However, their search yielded only traces of old fire sites. While some of the members of the fire brigade report glimpses of a forest dweller donning fur, the latest sighting has been met with skepticism. A local fire d- uh, volunteer dismissed the recent report as nonsense. Well, I don't think this picture is nonsense, but I, but I know I'm old. I believe all pictures are worse than my, my mom and dad are worse than me, but... Why would you go through all this? Right. Just to go viral? You're going to make your friend run naked with wolf stuff on right. and a right. stick? I, right. I don't know. The densely forested, forested regions cover a significant portion of Germany, providing fertile grounds for myths and legends. These tales often center around people living off the land and mysterious mysteries of the wilderness. The forests have been historically uh, been a wellspring of information, giving to fairy tales, blah, 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 the Brothers Grimm, blah, blah, blah. I don't know. Are there any German termites? Do we believe in the Wolfman? Germites. Germites? <laughs> <laughs> do we? Do we? Do we? 
Uh, this makes me laugh my ass off. Zoom CEO, the CEO of Zoom, uh-huh. he said employees need to come back to work because it's really hard to work over Zoom. Hello. <laughs> I hated Zoom from day one because like when I have to do media stuff, if I have to call radio stations, you used to just be able to call. And then everybody's like, oh, can we do Zoom? Well, that means I have to take a shower. The whole joy of radio is I can get up, drink coffee, look like crap, and do all my work. And then I go back to bed, usually. That's how that rolls. Depends on what time I have to get up. Right, the baby goes back to bed. Back to the big crib. But I've never, like, I'm not a Zoomer. I'll, I will do it under duress. I will do it for some podcast if it's friends. But I just don't like it. Nobody looks right. Everybody's looking behind them to look at what their own furniture looks like. Like, does this, do I look like I'm a serious person? Or do I, should, I, should I be a funny person? Or it's distracting. Yeah, you're surrounded by but you're the CEO, dude. You, you can't say this. No. It's so yeah. great. He's realizing, no, everyone's just fucking off. People don't have pants on. People have cats underneath them. There's dogs going <laughs> the whole time you're on the Zoom. The video CEO <clears throat> wants his employees to come back into the office at least two days a week, telling staff during a company-wide meeting on what? Zoom. That they simply just cannot have a great conversation via remote uh, meetings yeah. alone. Wow. No, there's, it's never a great conversation because there's still a lag. Right. It's not like you're sitting there in a bar. Right. There's still that pause. So you're advocating staff meetings in bars. I'm advocating all meetings in bars. All meetings, whether they're serious <laughs> or non-serious, there is no reason. You don't need to go to WeWork, and we don't need to Zoom. If I said, hey, everybody meet me at Paradise, where they have real-life minnow shots. That's at Lake of the Ozarks. You can shoot them in them. Paradise. Yeah. yeah, that's why it's Paradise. You can shoot. I mean, there's just no... I. I just can't believe the irony. Mm -hmm. He said, quite often you come up with great ideas. Um, uh, But when we are on Zoom, it's really hard. We cannot debate each other well because everyone tends to be friendly when you're enjoying a Zoom call. I don't know about that. that. Well, I'm not on them with lots of other people. Like I see corporate friends of mine where there's like a a Brady Bunch out of control. There's like 50 (laughs) people. And then people all of a sudden, like during one, no one's really paying attention. Like, I had to have one with all the website people, and they're nice and all that. But then a guy would just blink out. Yeah. He would just go, I'm like, well, where, the, where the fuck did he just go? Why is he not listening? Right. And then it's back, oh, sorry, man. I, had to... I don't care. <laughs> but it was, that now. that's what I'm now focused on. Right. I bet he went to go get something to eat. What am I going to have for lunch? I haven't even thought about that. <laughs> yeah. We cannot debate each other very well because everyone tends to be friendly. Um... One of the chief beneficiaries of COVID lockdown era revolution and remote Zoom has come under fire in recent week for making potentially exploitive changes to their conferences, apps, terms, and conditions. Well, I wouldn't know anything about that. Are they going to start to saying they own your meeting? That they own the content? Buried with Zoom's new um, T plus C, the technology quietly announced its intention to scrape its own users' private videos audio and messaging sessions for training and tuning and future art. Oh, and future AI projects. So now you're stealing my voice. Uh, I don't like that. Eric, back to he's the CEO. Of Eric Juan, Jan. I don't know. I'm just saying that. In our early days, we all knew each other. He said this audio was leaked, but as the company has scaled up to meet the growing role in office culture worldwide, he says Zoom's own camaraderie between staffers eroded due to both the isolation of remote work and the expansion of the workforce. Over the past several years, we've hired so many new Zoomies. Oh, they call them Zoomies. Zoomies. <laughs> Boomy Zoomie. Yeah. It's really hard to build trust. Trust is a foundation for everything. Without trust, we will be slow. <laughs> the erosion of trust internally at Zoom echoes customers' own second thoughts on the privacy's app standards, on the app's privacy standards for both personal security and corporate trade secrets. You might want to think about all that. I don't know. I'm in favor of the children not having to go back into offices, but two days a week. Come on. Yeah. You can meet Eric halfway, I guess. I don't know. Elliot Higgins of the news organization Bellingcat said, we run our training workshops on Zoom, so Zoom is effectively planning to train its AI on our entire workshop with no compensation. So bye-bye, Zoom. 
okay, that's not cool. No. You can't use all of our real work meetings right. as your, yeah. Yeah, we need to sign up for that. Yeah. So <laughs> somebody wrote, I used to say the most important thing to remember about Zoom is that remember everyone wants to see your cat, but now the most important thing to remember is that Zoom is going to use your Zoom sessions to train a AI, which is a great reason to stop using Zoom. Yeah. Well, they shouldn't do that. No. I don't think that should, but it was just a matter of time. So they're going to take it, and then they'll say they're not doing it, and they'll be doing it. Right. Yeah. So you just have to decide. This is another thing. You know, right. can it, do you, are the, what's the, hey, Google speaker that's in this house. <laughs> and then my dad's like, you leave that shit on. Do you know what it's listening to? I'm like, Dad, even if there's someone listening in the <laughs> world, what, what do they hear me talking to the baby cat? Right. Yeah, you know, who's going to be a big cat? I mean, who... Oh, well, nobody went, where's your bird? Go get your bird. I mean, I'm sure they're ready to blow their heads off, whoever is, has to listen to my conversation with a cat. God. That is just, um. Who likes Subway still? I never really liked Subway. No, it's too. Uh, Jersey Mike's and Jimmy John's are better. But guess what? The people who own Jimmy John's? Mm -hmm. Roark Capital? Yep. They're buying Subway. Yep, it's going to be gone. But I don't know if they're going to keep the name. It doesn't say. Subway entered into a definitive agreement to be acquired by affiliates of private equity firm Rourke Capital, the owner of Jimmy John's. But wait till you hear what else they order. Um, they, the, Subway had been family-run for more than 60 years. They put the restaurant chain up for sale. It's kind of sad. Yeah. But also, the Irish courts proved it's not even bread, whatever that, we're eating over there. It is, the, yeah, yeah, the meat feels yeah. a little wet, and it feels like Squishy. the cheap turkey my mom would buy yeah. instead of the good turkey, right. and everybody knows the difference. I'm not saying it is that, but that's what it tasted right. like. But guess what? I, I Whoever this Roark, Roark company is, mm -hmm. boy, I like everything on this list, <laughs> and it's all terrible for you. Uh -huh. Arby's, Af Taco Bell and Arby's, that's a tie, my two favorite. Yeah. Aunt Annie's. How can you not? Those are good. At the airport? Yeah. Oh! <laughs> Basket Robins? Love it. Buffalo Wild Wings? I don't love because the seats aren't comfortable. They're freezing. Yeah. I can't go in there in shorts. My legs freeze. Their wings are, wings are, the wings are okay. Yeah. Cinnabon? They own that. They own yeah. Carl's Jr. I've never really eaten there. Neither. Hardee's? I used to love it when I was like in high school. There was one bar house. Culver's? The Butter Burger? Whoa. Nice. Uh, wonderful. Um... Duncan, Donks. Donks, as my East Coast friends would say. Um, Jamba, Jim and Nick's Barbecue, Miller's Ale House. I've eaten at some on the Those road. Are Those are fine. Yep. yep. Uh, nothing Bunt Cakes, Schlotzky's, oh. Seattle's Best International, Sonic, and the Cheesecake Factory. Holy shit. Uh-huh. Subway has 37,000 subways around the world. <laughs> Annual revenue in the region of $10 billion. Yep, Subway restaurants are owned and operated by Subway's franchisees. It's a lot of money. They gotta upgrade their menu. I think it, I'm just beyond it with Jimmy John's and, or Jersey Mike's. Yeah. I like them both. Mm -hmm. If it's on the road and it's something where I'm like, okay, I, got, I wanna know what I'm actually eating. eating. <laughs> yeah, that I don't even know what if that's all real. But mm -hmm. okay, this is, um, this is Midwest um, crazy ID channel stuff. The BTK killer? Termites, do we all remember that serial killer? Bind, torture, kill? Dennis Radar was his name? Well, it's really weird because a while back, I don't know what I saw it on or whatever, but his daughter is, seems like a very sensible, nice person. Mm -hmm. And then she moved. You know, you have to move. You can't be in the town, right? Yeah. I think she went to Minnesota or something. And then she just like chilled out for a while, but then she came out and she wrote a book and, you know, no harm, no foul, but she went to jail to visit her father who she had not visited yet. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to read you the story because they think there's two unsolved murders that he may have committed and he's not doing well health wise. So they sent her in oh. to try to get him to chat him up. Wow. Yeah. Come on, freaky dad. <laughs> what else did you do? Was it that boring in Kansas? <laughs> <laughs> I didn't like that he was a compliance officer because I'm still mad at that dog catcher from when I was 17 years old. What? Yeah, I've said that story on here. That's why I got a ticket. Oh, yeah. Yeah. 
It's just ridiculous. But anyway, maybe there's nice ones out there. I don't know. I've never met one except that one. An infamous serial killer's daughter has shared how she stunned him with a surprise pr- prison visit while trying to yield information about possible undiscovered victims. Dennis Radar, better known as the BTK killer, was visited by Carrie Ross and 45, who said her dad was shocked to see her and that she fears he's close to dying. She says she doesn't know much, how much longer he has left after setting out to help the cops who discovered possible trophies from victims after launching a search for evidence at his home in Kansas on Tuesday. So they were digging up the backyard again. Oh, man. Yeah. Uh-huh. This, well, this might really be helpful if somebody's kid is still missing and maybe they, they get some closure on that. Officials on Wednesday dug up items of interest, including binding-type items during searches of his old property, following the discovery of pantyhose with knots that would probably go around the wrist or ankle in April. Huh. Yeah, wait, there's one. Radar 70... Eight gave himself the nickname BTK as an Ackerman for binding, torture, and killing. He, he confessed to killing 10 people from 1978 until his arrest in 2005. He's such an idiot, too. He typed it all on a church computer and sent it like an wow. old school disc to the mm-hmm. cops. And it was like basically watermarked right in there. This was from this computer. Here is the address. Got himself caught. Um, his daughters say investigators have now zeroed in on the site of a metal shed in the backyard of her childhood home in Park City, Kansas where he's believed that he, have, he may have hidden tokens stolen from his victims, victims such as driver's license. He was known to hide things in our house, she revealed. He built a false bottom in our hallway where he hid evidence like driver's licenses before. Wow. We also had two dogs die, and he buried one of them in the backyard in the 90s. I've always theor- theorized that he might have buried stuff there, too. He's currently serving 10 life consecutive sentences at, um, at the El Dorado Confec- uh, Correctional Facility in Kansas. She said she first became aware of new cold cases linked to her father in January, though the investigation into the disappearance of Cindy Dawn Kinney, a 16-year-old cheerleader who was last seen in 1976. In June, she then became aware of the unsolved murder of Shauna Garber, whose remains were found in Pineville, Mo, which would just be across the state line in 1990, Mm -hmm. which helped her motivate, uh, which motivated her help to help investigators. So I think that, I bet you they do find it. Although I would think he would have bragged about it because he's a full-blown narcissist. Yeah. Like, he really likes telling you everything he did. The videos mm-hmm. of him on tape of just bragging about, and then I did this, and then I got away with this, and, you know, I... Is I, anybody living in the house? Is anybody? I don't know if anybody's in the house. Um, we just sit on the other side of the state line from Kansas and Wichita, which is his stomping ground. There's other unsolved mur- murders and missing persons cases. Uh, he's been questioned over the disappearance of his before and denied killing either woman, but did previously say he enjoyed his meeting with investigators over the Garber disappearance. Uh, Rawson's fly out to see her father in Kansas uh, for a total of three hours in June and July was the first time they met face-to-face since his arrest in 2005. Wow. Yeah, imagine if that was your dad. And then you got to rethink your whole life. Everything he did, where he said he was, what kind of lies, what kind of bullshit. She said, I hadn't had contact with him in 18 years besides letter, just letters to sit across from him was quite staggering. Um, she's detailed her struggle to come with her father's heinous, heinous crimes in several books. She often advocates for victims in high-profile cases. Uh, her father's murders began before she was even born and kept going until she was 12. It wasn't until 2005, and she was in her mid-20s when she learned of her father's gruesome crimes. Uh, The key to surviving life with my dad? Watch the pot closely, she said to Sierra. Turn on the heat and know to get out of the way before it blows. Oh, God. Oh. Yeah. 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 Um, The home was torn down in 2007. Oh, it was torn down? Mm -hmm. And the property belongs to Oh, the city bought it so they can keep digging whenever they want and stuff. Good idea. Yeah. You go, Kansas. Mm-hmm. Putting on your thinking caps. <laughs> Good for you. Oh. She tried to press him for details, um, but he brushed her off, dashing hopes he would give grieving families some relief after, after previously refusing to cooperate with police. He's still sharp as attack, uh, as attack despite his ailing, ailing health. He was coming up with alibis. I mean, I could tell... I mean, he could tell I was there for answers. It was surreal. Wow. Wow, yeah. And then I went to her Twitter thing. Uh-huh. Actually, it just came up on my thing. I didn't even go to it. 
and she said she's leaving Twitter for now. There's things going on she can't talk about. Wow. And um, this is no longer a way to contact me. Wow. It's weird. That's yeah. Tricky. Yeah. So there's a little update on the BTK killer. Sounds like he's not going to give it up, though. No. Um, all right. I don't think I might not. All right, I got to do this one. I got a couple. I got a good couple ones more. My flight missing Malaysia flight three seventy. Let's still talk about it, <laughs> shall we? Yes. Scientists claim barnacles found on the wings of the missing plane could reveal exactly where it is. What? I know. Barnacles. I know barnacles. I know. The answer may be con- contain. In the shells of little crustaceans are called barnacles that attach themselves to bits of the plane's debris. Barnacle shells contain information about the different water temperatures they've been exposed to in their lifespan. The academics think this information can help track the movement of the crustaceans to where they first attach themselves to the debris and turn the place, oh, and in turn find the place that uh, Flight 370 hit the water. Although no one knows, of course we do, don't know, but I think the pilot did it. Yeah, uh, it's widely to believe it hit the Indian Ocean because several bits of debris were confirmed to have been part of the plane. Um, then it's just the history of the thing. But they think they can. I mean, really? <laughs> Are we do we have any scientific termites? Can we really do that? No, the whole ocean. The Indian, that's only one ocean. They don't even know. They're in the China Sea. They're, they're at Lake of the Ozarks ocean. looking for this plane. I mean, it could be anywhere. That's ridiculous. It's similar to the um, tree rings on barnacles. That's how they, so I get what they're saying. Like they can, but this seems like yeah. kind of a stretch. Uh-huh. But I'm going to hope they're right, and I hope it happens. <laughs> I hope we find it that's for all those people mm-hmm. that want to know. Here's a little sad story. San Francisco, let's get it together, shall we? Please. I love your city. I love your chowder bowls. I know. That's so tasty. Well, have you had one? Yeah, delicious. They're delicious. Mm -hmm. I don't care if it's a touristy thing. I'll sit there and take (laughs) selfies of myself eating a chowder bowl all day long. Nordstrom closes its San Francisco store after 35 years. Downtown. That is sad because that was a beautiful Nordstrom. Nordstrom closes the doors of his five-story department on Sunday, ending a 35-run as the city suffers a retail exodus. The retailer announced the closure in line on May, saying the dynamics of the downtown San Francisco market have changed dramatically over the past several years, impacting customer foot traffic to our stores and our ability to operate successfully. This is after we already talked about hotels that are leaving downtown San Francisco. Right. Somebody's got to get it together. And yet, my friends who work out there or live anywhere near there, the rent is still crazy. It's It's crazy expensive. Um, A nearby Nordstrom Rack closed last month. I love Nordstrom Rack. I know. Um, um, It's Westfield that owns that whole thing. Ah. Yeah. um, Challenging conditions in downtown San Francisco, which has led to decline in sales, occupancy, and foot traffic. Once a bustling retail center at the heart of the thing, San Francisco has taken a significant hit in the past few years. Total sales have fallen from four hundred fifty five million to two hundred ninety eight and the foot traffic has plunged from nine million visits to <laughs> five point six. Wow. This is another setback for San Francisco, which saw its economy hit hard by the pandemic as many Silicon Valley companies allowed flexible work from home policies, resulting in many white collar workers filtering out of the city. Three days later, corporate three years later, corporate America has yet to return in the same numbers. This is the problem with like city, Minnesota, for instance, uh-huh. Minneapolis. Yep. Like I've been going there my whole life to do, I always did Acme Comedy Club and then I got graduated and kept going to the state theater down there. Target is a big employer in mm-hmm. Minneapolis, the store Target. Yeah. And then when they said work from, you know, pandemic stuff, well, now but nobody's coming down for lunch. Mm-hmm. You've lost your lunch crowd. You lost your happy hour crowd. One of my favorite little Irish pubs in downtown Minneapolis, it's only open for events now. I know. I went over. I'm like, what? So there has to be like a Timberwolves game or a concert. And they're not open after the event, just before the event. Oh, man. Yeah. So if you had all these companies and the people did not come back to work, as much as I cheer on the children who want to work from home, well, we got to think of what are we going to do with all this space then? True. Yeah. I say pickleball. The whole Sears Tower. It's 
You gotta be pickleball. <laughs> It's sad, though. I mean, I like these cities. Um, yeah. Well-known chain stores like Whole, uh, Whole Foods, Anthropology, Office Depot, and CB2 have also ceased operations in the city's downtown since the start of the pandemic. In total, more than 39 retail stores have shuttered in San Francisco's Union Square. Like, I used to go down there and make a whole day out of it. Yes. Um, especially, I don't know. Uh, despite the troubles, IKEA opened last week a three-level 52,000-square-foot store. City leaders are hoping that the home furniture store will drop or draw shoppers to the downtown San Francisco area and support other businesses in the area at the time of closures. Da, 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 da. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I don't see the San Francisco people running down to an Ikea. No. And there's probably one out in, you know, San, out of, San, Mateo, San Mateo or, Mateo. yeah. yeah. Um, I'm going to save that one. I don't <laughs> want to save this one. Okay, FEMA. Can we talk about FEMA officials? Yes. And then I'm going to tell you about some wild monkeys in Florida. What? Yeah. Of course. Speaking of wildfires. I have been to Maui. I've been lucky enough to go maybe three times in my life. Cool. Um, I like it. And I did a corporate gig there. Oh. And uh, the, the deal and the shindig was at the Four Seasons. Mm -hmm. Very fancy. Yeah. I didn't love that Four Seasons. Because they create their own little beach there. It's, corporate. it's very corporate, so you can't go on a real beach walk because you're kind of in a cove. Right. I mean, it's all beautiful. Don't get me wrong. But I did wonder when we send all these FEMA people to go help the people of Lahaina, where are they going to stay? Right. And right. can we get FEMA trailers there? Or, 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 right. I would say, guess where you're not staying? The Four Seasons. It's $1,000 a night. So stay the Four Seasons. Yep. Oh. Not just there either. The Grand Walia, super fancy. Love it. I love going yeah. there for a drink. Their breakfast, it's like fancy, fancy, fancy. Yeah, they're staying at three five-star hotels. Oh Fairmont, Kiana, Lanai, oh, the Fairmont, the Four wow. Seasons, and the Grand Walia. Oh, my God. Just not a good look, United States no. government. How about giant-ass tents? And I'm not even kidding. Wow. Camp. Yes. All the people that got... The fires destroyed their houses. They're probably camping. Where are they? I don't know. Camp but you don't need to be at the Four Seasons. No. This is where government sometimes you just go, even if they're letting you have the room for free, mm -hmm. which I doubt they are, but even if they were, it's still a bad look. Bad look. When they're, you gave the people $700, well, they can't even buy one night there exactly. if they wanted to. Yeah. Um, oh, bungling, bungling U.S. government bureaucrats dispatched to Maui Disaster Zone are shacking up $1,000 night luxury hotels on the Hawaiian Island. Wow. Officials from Bima have been slammed by locals over their slow response to the devastating wildfires that have claimed at least 114 lives and left thousands of people homeless after their houses were scorched to the ground. But that has not stopped the underfire agency from slashing taxpayer cash to put up more than 1,000 of its personnel at four bank-breaking resorts in Walia. Walia is probably, I, if I remember right, a half hour south of where the fires were, yeah. ab about that. Uh -huh. But this is... Da -da -da. Um, I mean, I, how do you, no, 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 you just don't, you don't do this. No. Even if you had to get big, cool tents and Johnny on the spots and sorry, yeah. it sucks to be FEMA sometimes. Right. Um, oh, 45 minute drive away from the fire town ravage of Lahaina. Like what a. Wow. Federal government rates for the week, all the, all the thousand dollars a night. To complete the mission, FEMA selected hotels where all responders can be centrally located to ensure the most effective response possible. Due to the lack of available lodging, they've negotiated government rates at the lowest possible cost for our staff. It still don't look good. It looks terrible. Do something else. Yeah. I don't know what the answer is, but it's not this. As we transition and recover, staff will, know, will move to longer-term, more affordable responder oh, lodging. Okay. Right. Where's that? that? The Fairmont Kialani, <laughs> uh, known for heavenly white, boasts on its website being the only all in all only all suite hotel in Hawaii that once welcomed ex Bond star Pierce Bronson and offers gourmet dining to uber wealthy guests. Unbelievable. The seven hundred eight rooms, da, 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 the Four Seasons. Yeah, I just mm. this is where I don't care if it's free. It looks horrible. Terrible. Yeah. Walia Beach. Well, yeah, that's just a note to the government. 
You got to yeah. rethink this stuff before yes. you do that. Just going to piss people off. No buffet for you. Florida? <laughs> Florida. Hello. They're a little busy right now. I know you're busy with your hurricane, but can we talk about your wild monkeys? <laughs> this is crazy. Wait till you see the. Sometimes I think monkeys are adorable. Sometimes they're so human like, it's terrifying. Yeah. Like, yeah, I don't know what. I know they're probably smarter than me. Like, if there were a bunch of them and they said, let's make a plan to fuck with Kathleen, I think they could do it. Officials in Florida are warning residents to keep their distance from wild monkeys that have been spotted around the city. Residents of Orange City, which is about 30 miles north of Orlando. Did you hear that, Carrot Top? Stay away from the monkeys! Stay away. They've reported multiple sightings of wild monkeys within the city. This is on a Facebook pay- post. Of course. Mm-hmm. The department says at least one of those monkeys spotted Wednesday. Ooh, he looks serious and angry, this little guy. <laughs> and he's got, he's got, like, they have, like, elf ears. Their ears come to points. What? Yeah. Cool. Um, this one was sp- spotted at a Popeye's chicken. He was later identi- uh, identified <laughs> as a rhesus macaw maca- monkey, a species that is native to Asia and can become aggressive when fed. The police department received two additional reports of wild monkey sightings on Tuesday, who said the officials are unsure uh, whether the sightings involve the same species of monkeys. Animal control officers, have, police have dispatched, have been dispatched to the locations of all the calls, and they've not been able to locate them. Cops are warning people don't try to capture the monkeys and to report, um, to report sightings to the commission's wildlife. Feeding wild monkeys, just keep this in mind. If you get a if you get a hankering to feed them, second degree misdemeanor, punishable by sixty days in jail, and a fine up to five hundred dollars. It would be funny. If you were in jail, and then the person in the cell next to you said, what did you do to get in here? And you had to admit that you fed a monkey. I <laughs> <laughs> <That> was badass. <laughs> um, uh, if you feed them, it can add, uh, it increases the likelihood of attacks, injuries, and the transmission of disease. Wow. Rhesus uh, monkeys are one of the two wild species, along with the ververt monkey. Monkeys? Ververt? They are reproducing in Florida. The core population of the rhesus macaws have been spotted uh, in Florida and Central Florida around the Silver River. Listen to this. How did we get these monkeys to start with? A boat operator released six of the monkeys in the 1930s. In the 30s. They've made it 100 years to attract tourists. The monkeys have had negative impacts on the sunshine stays in prior years. In the 70s, they destroyed red mangroves, leading to a massive vegetation loss and shoreline erosion. They but also tested po- positive for herpes B, so don't be kissing them, okay? <laughs> it's a rare viral infection that can lead to severe brain damage or death if not treated quickly. Wow. <laughs> Florida, I know you're busy. I know you got problems, but that's just a little. That's a friend. That's a helpful hamster tip. Don't feed the monkey. Run. Matter of fact, don't go up to it at Popeyes if you've been out drinking and you decided to go get some Popeyes and you're like, oh my God, there's a cute little monkey. No, no. get back in your car. Don't do it. Get back in your car. Um, oh, God. All right. Yes. Uh, oh, I got my, I got my lyrics in. This, this marks um, another year in my life I did not attend Burning Man, which... Every time I see that, I'm like, who would agree to this? Who's doing it? Well, I don't do well in the desert. It's too hot. I'm too, too fair skinned. I don't need more skin cancers growing off me. Well, there's a million reasons. Um, But these activists tried to block the road in and they caused all this bullshit. (sighs) They're burners of the world. Unite. Abolish capitalism. (laughs) General strike for climate. The group says the protest was designed to draw attention to capitalism's inability to address climate, ecolo- climate's ecological breakdown. It was meant as a protest against the popularization of Burning Man among, in, uh, among affluent people who do not live the stated values of Burning Man, resulting in a commendation of, fa- of the event. Wow. Commodification of the event, sorry. But things turned ugly when the state officers turned up and rammed through the protesters wielding a gun. They wrecked their whole little camp. They had cardboard boxes and things that they were out in the street. I mean, again, 
I, protest all you want, but don't block the road to Burning Man. Just no. be on the road. Be wave. Yeah, wave. People honk. Give up friendship bracelets that say abolish capitalism. Everybody <laughs> will roll their window down and go, oh, it's not free friendship bracelets, oh, guys. And then I'll maybe, the, you. yeah, I'll trade you. Here's one that says, I love the Chiefs. <laughs> Do you love football? <laughs> they drove directly, the cops rode re- Nevada Rangers, like Texas Rangers, I guess. They drove directly into a blockade set up by climate protesters on the road. Um, they don't like the private jets, and they don't like single-use plastic. Well, yeah. Well, mm-hmm. Call my friend Amy. Yeah. She hates plastic, too. She, hates she plastic. really hates all plastic. If she comes to this house with her husband, <laughs> Drew, I sometimes I've had to hide a water bottle. I'm like, I don't want her to yell at me. I can't, but I can't. But there's like, if it's a Fiji one, I just won't throw it out. I mean, I try to pay attention, but, you know, I'm not, whatever. (laughs) You get the point. Um, Here's just a little tipster for the children. Lana Del Rey is going on a limited tour. Great. Yeah, it's just a little plug. I don't really. Is she calling it Waffle House? No, she's hitting the road. Live Nation is doing it. Cool. Oh, it kicks off in Franklin, Tennessee. I won't be attending, but, you know, a lot of the youngsters are listening and they like her. Do you want to go? No. no? I, I don't like the sad children. It's not that I don't like them. It's just the music. Uh, it's very, yeah. I don't know. What? Not all the children are like that. No. Well, Florence and the Machine's not a child, but no. um, Maggie Rogers is very young. Love her. And she's uh, all, like, there's just, it's a little more. Lana, they say, is a genius and all that. And I think it's fine to have on on a Sunday morning, but am I going to attend it in person? Nay, nay. That's where I would have to start doing cocaine. That would be my first time. You like the Tay-Tay children. The Tay-Tay children, but Taylor's songs are upbeat. Right. For the most part. Uh-huh. They're not ethereal. Unless she's mad. Unless she's mad, then they're just, I agree! <laughs> you got to be careful. <laughs> Which leads us to our last segment. Lyrics. This one's a good one. I never knew what this meant. And as I read it, I was really singing a lot of the wrong words. <laughs> this is a song by America, the oh, band no. from the 70s called Tin Man. So, now, what, the, what did any of this mean? Sometimes late when things are real. And people give, I'm not even going to try to say, give the gift of gab between themselves. Some are quick to take the bait and catch the perfect prize that awaits them on the shelves. But Oz, Oz, I thought he was saying I never, but Oz never did give nothing to the Tin Man. I'm like, oh, the Wizard of Oz? Yeah. This is too hard. You haven't seen it, though. That's why. Well, I saw parts of the Wizard of Oz. Mm-hmm. That he didn't already have. And cause never was the reason for the evening or the tropic of Sir Galahad, which I thought he was saying Sir Galahad, and I didn't know who that was, and I didn't care to look it up. He's a knight. He's a knight. So please believe in me when I'm spinning round, 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 smoking glass, stained bright colors. Imagine going down, 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 down. Soap sud, <laughs> like green like bubbles. What the? I have no idea, and I did not care. I rode around singing it. I never did give nothing to the tin man. I never did give nothing to that he didn't. Then I read hand. <laughs> so we just sang anything and now here's a taylor one this ju- this just sounds like a mean email i like it i like it i like it this is really does it's a, that's what her things sound like angry little emails to exes which is fine Did whatever the whatever the children the, the, the kids like it i like some of them 3 a.m it's 3 a.m and i'm i'm still awake i bet you're just fine fast asleep in your city that's better than mine and the girl in your bed has fine pedigree and I'll bet your friends tell her she's better than me. Huh? <laughs> well, I tried to fit in with your upper crest circles. Yeah, they let me sit in the back when we were in love. Oh, they sit around talking about the meaning of life and the book that just saved them that I hadn't heard of. But now we're done and it's over. I bet you couldn't believe when you realize I'm harder to forget than I was to leave. I was to and I leave. bet you think about me. Yeah, who's a fa- who did she date that was so fancy? You grew up, <laughs> you grew up in a silver spoon gated community, community, glamorous, shy, bright, shiny, bright Beverly Hills. I was raised on a farm. No, it wasn't a mansion, just the just living room dancing and kitchen table bills. 
Well, I saw the picture of the house she grew up in, and it, that ain't no tiny house. It's about Jake Gyllenhaal. Oh, it's about Jake Gyllenhaal? Oh. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Wow. I'm just saying. She was bad. She was bad. This yeah. just sounds like a pissed off email you would write kind of half drunk and then go, did I send that? <laughs> Shit. Well, whatever. I meant it whether I was drunk or not. I meant it. There you go. So just remember, Oz never did give nothing to the tin man that he didn't already have. And cause never was the reason for the evening or the tro- tropic of Sir Galahad. Wow. Yep. Okay. Somebody <laughs> thought that that all worked really well. And it did. We all sang it. I never take it. Take it, take it, take it man. All right. Um, last things. Termites, and then I have to go. Fantasy football. Fantasy football? I did great. I got Jalen Hurts. I got Derrick Henry. Wow. Mm Mm-hmm. I did great. What league are you in now? What league? Well, that was the draft for the Children's League. Do you think you'll win? Do I think I'll win? Mm -hmm. Well, I'm going to try. I'm going to teach them that gambling is hard, and sometimes it's sad. (laughs) Suffer your disappointment. Suffer early. Mm -hmm. Get used to it. Um, The trucker had his back. There's more, and then there's going to be fall T-shirts, a new T-shirt. Uh-huh. Um, yes, they'll be ready next week. They're going on tour, too. If you could go rate and like my special on Amazon, that's always helpful. And the podcast, the podcast. And the podcast, too. Hey, yeah, I don't even know. Where do you rate that? Wherever you listen to a podcast, I don't even YouTube, know. How do you do that? Apple, yeah. Oh, YouTube, yeah. yeah. Comments, I know comments. how to like something on that. The termites are good about commenting for each other. And here's the shows. Boise, Reno, Hershey, Pittsburgh, Cleveland, Eau Claire, Madison, Chicago, Richmond, Charlotte, Des Moines, Kansas City, Virginia Beach, Washington, D.C., boom, Fort Worth, Houston, St. Louis, home, Denver, fun, the Villages, well, I hope everything in Florida is still fine, yeah, exactly. and, but it will be by November, I don't know, Cutler Bay, Florida, uh, Eugene, Portland, Seattle, now, there was going to be a lot of more shows announced very soon. Uh-huh. For all of the spring, well, maybe even into the summer. There's so many things to book. The booking is getting so crazy because if you want to get the good spots on the uh-huh. good night, I mean, they're like, oh, do you have any interest in being in us? <laughs> would, would you like to, to be in Long Beach in January of 2026? Mm-hmm. It's our first Saturday opening. Mm-hmm. Fine, put me in. If I'm alive, I'll go. The Canadians are going to be happy, I hope. I'm yeah. trying very hard. Uh-huh. Canada, I'm doing everything I can to m- people, make that happen. It's not my fault. I know it's not my fault. I, I try. I put out things, emails. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to start sending weird lyrics to my agent. <laughs> the, you know, Oz never did give nothing to the Tin Man. How come I'm not working in Winnipeg? And then it won't make any sense. <laughs> Here you go, Heidi. You figure that out. Puzzle me back. Puzzle me back. <laughs> All right. Night, night, termites. <laughs>